Um, our next speaker is known for her community work and he's the CEO of Wyanga Aboriginal Elders Program in Redfern. I'd like to welcome Millie Ingram. Thank you, Sue. And uh, yes, I'm here because Elaine asked me to come along and uh, sort of plopped it on me fairly quickly. But um, I have been a friend of Gordon's and uh, Elaine's for over 40 years. As a matter of fact, we had a childcare centre in Redfern and uh, his first exhibition was in that childcare centre. I believe it was your first, Gordon. Uh, before I started, I was the traditional custodians of the land on which we stand today. And um, welcome you all here as well. Um, I think it's a shame that in this day and age that we have a beautiful couple like this with so much talent. As much as I love Gordon's painting and I just love them, I also love Elan's photography. You've done so much good photography and a lot of the historical moments that we had in Redfern. And Redfern is the place to be. Um, <laughs> and um, so those historical moments, we have made many changes um, here in this country. Uh, for instance, when we started the Aboriginal Legal Centres off that, uh, we triggered off the Australian Legal Aid. When we started off the Aboriginal Medical Service in Redfern, that kicked off um, under Gough Whitlam uh, Medicare, which I think every Australian enjoys today. And uh, there are so many other things that we have done in Redfern that is the catalyst and uh, the, the pilot for what could happen everywhere. And I just love Gordon's paintings and um, judgment by his peers I mean, I'm glad that you look at that magistrate, but I wish a lot more would look at it because instead of giving us our community programs uh, that, like Gordon said in your banner out there, no, jail was a very lonely place, and yet they're building more and more prisons. We got the highest incarceration rate uh, of any race of people on the planet per capita. And that's an indictment on us as a nation. And we have to start to deal with all these things and the way to go is through the, the arts. I really believe the creative arts, the performing arts and all of those ways are the way we have to, give, to go to start to change this. I put to the government that um, we should be targeting a reduction of 50% every three years of the incarceration. To do that, um, the, the Attorney General did a launch at what they called um, reinvention, juvenile uh, reinvestment, that's right, juvenile reinvestment, let's invest and juvenile, so he wants to look at the um, <coughs> Summary Offences Act and the remand. I had a nephew who spent two years in jail, uh, I'm being accused, and he spent two years in jail, and when he came out, he was found not guilty. But while he was in jail for two years, he lost his wife, he lost his house, and he lost his baby. And now he's an habitual criminal back in there because he said, I've lost it, I did that time for nothing. Uh, and this is what Gordon knows, and that's why he built Jacob and Body Peers. You know, if they're going to have Aboriginal people coming up, um, we should be having Aboriginal juries. What's wrong with that? You know, the white folks have been judging us for many years, and uh, we have to now have some sort of recourse with that. I really don't think uh, that's the be all and end all of it. I think we should have circle sensing, there should be more program put at community level until the government starts to realise. The only solutions that are going to come with the so-called Aboriginal problem is going to come from the Aboriginal people themselves. And we have proven we can do it, we've proven we can still do it, but the government is not saying that. You've got the government there, you've got a whole level of, of bureaucracy that thinks they know better, and then the little drips down uh, of what um, we get as Aboriginal to put our programs together. I love the art. I, I reckon Avatar pinched your... Oh, yeah, they had two. I'll get to take that. was about land rights. It was about the tree that they tried to get the one to come in. Did anybody see the Avatar tree? Do you think that's the Avatar tree? Oh, God, these paintings are just wonderful. And um, we talked about, I like to always talk about um, Mr. Rudd, sorry, which I think was all tongue in cheek myself. And I, look, I respect everybody who thinks that was a wonderful thing. But it's done nothing since, and absolutely nothing. The same as the referendum, we've got a big smoke screen, so I have this big smoke screen about the referendum all in, terrorising the people of the Northern Territory with nuclear waste and let's rape your country and that, and uh, get all the minerals out and we'll shove you here and shove you there. The suicide rate has gone sky high, but we won't talk about that. We'll talk about 
the changes to the Constitution. I voted in the 67 Constitution. We came out and we thought, this is great, you know, things have got to change now. Hello, <laughs> nothing changed. If you remember what Kevin Rudd said here in his speech, his sorry speech, he said, we will not repeat the mistakes of the past. Yeah. What has he done ever since? He's repeated the mistakes of the past. I work for the mission manager for rations. I had to go to there and slave for 20 hours a week to get a little slip of paper to say that I could go downtown and buy some bread and milk and syrup. Not allowed um, uh, sugar, you had to have brown sugar. You always, uh, they can't watch it by these slips. What have we got today? The basic card. So you've got to go in there and they, they really, they've uh, reinvested in racism because you have to um, go and stand in line with your basic card but you're not allowed to stand in the same line as these wonderful folks over here paying cash. You've got to stand over there and pay your basic card, with your basic card. So, um, yeah, they kept it in and racism is now a lot of in this country. Which brings me to the point that I want you all to think about, as Australians. As Australians, I don't care whether you've just been naturalised or just become a citizen or you've been a 10th or 11th generation Australian. You are Australians and we are Australians. We are your first Australians. And you ought to be appalled and disgusted at what's happening in this country today to, to your people. It's us. We are your people and you are our people. We are all Australians together. We have to be the first Australians and we have to be given that status in our own country. We are unique and we are beautiful people and we share with all of our fellow Australians. You feel the belonging to the land, as Jeff said. You feel the belonging, you feel the connection. You feel the connection to us, you feel the connection to each other. And we are all Australians. We're not some remote little charity that you have in South Africa or maybe in Tibet or maybe in Asia or somewhere. We are your people here on your, our land. You belong to the land as well. We belong to the land. Let's care for this land and let's tell this country, this government, that you're not gonna to tolerate uh, the conditions and the way we are treated in the 21st century. We can start by demanding that they give us a place, and we start with God Island, I think, so we can have a keeping place for Gordon. So we can, he will not be struggling for the next uh, 10 years to do this, uh, to find a place at home. Norma, my, Ingram, my sister, got him a home for three years, and then that was taken away, and now you've been wandering around homeless. And all our wonderful people that do all this wonderful work are just ignored. I was just talking to Shane earlier and he was telling us about Benita Bar Marbo. All the, what did they do? That wonderful her and Eddie did. Uh, we met Eddie, we knew Eddie Marbo from way back. And now she's living in poverty. Yeah. Oh. She's living in poverty. And we've got one of the most beautiful artists, two artists, both of you, Elaine and Gordon. And you can't even find a home for your artwork. So, you know, we've got to start standing up and be counted as Australians together. Your first Australians and our fellow Australians. Let's get out there and make somebody do some action. We don't want to be sitting here paying lip service, which I feel I've been doing for the last few years because we don't seem to be getting anywhere. But if we do it together, that's how we can make the changes in our country. We are 2% of the population, and yet 2% of the population, they can't solve our problems. Their problems. We know how to solve it, but they just want to community uh, consult. They say they can solve it, they don't. But I don't want to give them any more lectures here this morning. <laughs> as long as we know that we're all fellow Australians, not Aboriginal and not non-Aboriginal, not black and white. We are Australians and we are your first Australians. And you give us the dignity and the respect that that entails. And this country will get better. But you can't go along and leave a whole group of people behind, particularly when we're such a minority. So I would hope that we can go away from here with something positive for Gordon. I just love your artwork, Gordon, and, and we will find a home for it. And I think we should start with Goat Island. Anybody here that's got the power for Goat Island? Um, <laughs> let's, 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 start that and let's make that our target in the first place. And um, get this wonderful keeping place for all of our artists, all of our New South Wales artists. I really want to promote a lot of New South Wales artists. But I'm glad you're here and you show your interest and you show your support because you are here. And I thank you for that. And I think together we can help our wonderful Gordon and Elaine. Thank you.